Yeah. So when I say it comes from adversity, it's because I went into rotations, third year medicine, not giving a fuck whatsoever about the actual rotations. Like I was very much in my own head doing my own thing. And I remember the beginning of third year medicine, I'd already, I was fresh off the step one. Oh no, I had taken this, sorry, I'd taken the step one a year earlier. I went through that research year. I'd already been studying for step two, writing it. The bottom line is my knowledge base was like far, was far ahead of my peers. And I went in and I just didn't care about the actual rotation. I didn't care if I showed up on time. I didn't care about like how I came off to people. I was very much just in my own headspace. Like I think I had ego that was unchecked. I had confidence that was, I had confidence that was unchecked by corresponding humility. That's what it was. That's what it was. And so the first rotation I had in, uh, that I had in third year was internal medicine. And like, I had horrible attendance. I, Wait. sorry. Like, I, I'm so shocked. Cause like, I remember I no read shame, that shame. blog and I was like, okay, yeah, I but yeah, but I didn't, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you read you read about you read my discussion on rotations and stuff, but you don't know where this is going. You don't know where yeah, this is yeah. go- you don't know where this is going. Like this is this is pretty crazy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty I'm crazy. Shocked. So I went into third year, I entered third year medicine. I thought I was hot shit. I knew I was yeah. hot shit. Okay. Oh. I knew I knew it. So like I went into third year medicine and like uh just the way I talked to people, like I um I remember I was speaking to an attending as though I was quizzing her or something. Like who the fuck does that? Like it was, there was a lack of self-awareness uh, th- or sorry, there was a lack of, uh, <laughs> there was a lack of conscientiousness for yeah. how I was coming off to other people. Like maybe, and it's weird because like I consider myself actually having pretty decent emotional intelligence. So, you know, these, these, these elements of reflection are pretty manifold. Like there's a lot, there's many layers of what's going on, but right. like I went into rotations and I remember like my first day I quizzed some attending on something. I was like, what's like the mechanism? I asked her, I'm like, what's like the mechanism of action of this or something? Like, it was just bizarre. Like who does that? Like, it's not good. Like, were you asking her cause you didn't know? Uh, or were you asking her because you wanted to make sure she It was knew? pretty, it was pretty much like I had memorized like a regimen of like something that was done for a particular disorder. I don't know. And like, yeah. I asked her and she gave me like a different, response as to what I had read and then I asked her like like why it was the case but it was I just recall it was in such a way that was like um it wasn't coming from a place of humility it was coming from a place of like um it's hard it's hard to explain it's hard to explain Uh but let's just say let's just say in the medical environment it comes off the wrong way like you have to have that conscientiousness so during internal medicine, just the way I talked to people, uh, I had horrible attendance, and I thought I was hot shit, and somehow it didn't matter, and I passed the rotation without an issue. Like, so let me let me tell you what went down. I I think I skipped like two weeks of rotation. I skipped like two weeks of internal medicine. I didn't show up to ward rounds. Like I didn't do anything, and then I randomly like rocked up, and the attending, like she's on the ward round with, she was like a nice lady, like in her, probably in her late forties, really, really sweet lady. And like, she was, she was an endocrinologist and you know, you have the, the junior house officer who was like two years out of med school. You had the registrar who was like five years out of med school. And I just like rock up to the rotation at the time. I didn't think anything of it. Looking back, they were probably like, why the fuck is this dude just like rocking up? So like he has no consistency with our team. And I remember we had a a patient, we had like a 15 year old who had a complicated case going on as far as like he had chronic fatigue and there were elements that we were discussing as far as like, uh, you know, he had grown a lot. So they brought up like Marfan syndrome, you know, tangentially and the attending like asked me if I knew what Marfan syndrome was because like, you know, that's just a standard thing you could ask a, a third year med student. Yeah. And I sort of like, I just remember my responses. I was so fast and in her, in, in her face about it. I was just like chromosome 15, autosomal dominant, FBN1, FBN2, fibrillin. She's like, what's fibrillin? And I was just like, it's a glycoprotein that forms a sheath around elastin. And like, I remember I had like, I had regurgitated 
like what I had memorized from like an offline NVMe. Like I remember, I think it was on like NVMe 11 or 12 or something. That was like choice E for one of the answers. It was literally like five, like you had to know and that was the answer. I was like regurgitating it when I was speaking yeah. to her. And then, um, so we were just chatting about different things. And there was a patient who needed a, a materipone test. Something to do with like congenital adrenal hyperplasia. It's some obscure yeah. test that's like rarely fucking done. Like people like materipone, but I had read it somewhere. And she asked the registrar like what it was. And I sort of just cut off. I cut basically he hesitated for like two seconds. And like I kind of just in inserted myself. I was like, it's an 11 beta hydroxylase inhibitor. So I was just a dick. I was just a dick. But what's interesting is at the end of this ward round, she told me that she would write me a letter of recommendation. She said that. So what I'm, what I'm saying to you is I went into this rotation and I thought I was hot shit. The knowledge base was there, but like in terms of my professional conduct, I was just all about myself and I had absolutely no conscientiousness for the medical environment. Okay. Horrible attendance. Next, I went on to surgery, and this carried through. I had horrible, horrible attendance on surgery. But this was a very different rotation from internal medicine. People actually gave a fuck. Okay? Yeah. So, like, I didn't show up to rounds, I think, for, like, a week. I was doing my own thing. Like, I was, I was doing the PhD at the time, which, by the way, I graduated with an MPhil. Like, I took the MPhil because I hated the PhD. I walked with the MPhil. I don't – that's a side story. Because you mentioned PhD earlier. Is M for like a master's or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a toned down version of a PhD. Oh, an an okay. MPhil. No one knows an MPhil. So who the fuck cares, right? But it's like, it, it's well, like, got a, I got a master's. I got a, well, I got a master's of research rather than a, a, a doctor of research. But it doesn't matter because I'm not in the academia anyway uh, for hmm. hospital stuff. But um, Michael, was your med school free then? Because you did an MD, PhD. It's not, like fucking, initial? It was not fucking free, dude. Because in the U.S. it would have been free. No, if you were... no, no, no. It was not free, dude. It was not free. Oh, so, like, I was I was busy with research at the time. I was still working for First Aid. I was now an editor for First Aid. I was working on yeah. my own textbook. My priorities were 0% on my rotations. I saw med school as just in the way of what I was trying to accomplish. And I didn't show up to rotations. And when I came back, I got upbraided. Like, I got reprimanded. Like I remember the the head of the surgery, like of the the rotation, he pulled me into his office and he just basically was like, "This is completely unacceptable." Uh, and then he cited like some conduct that I had, like where I had been on, I showed up to a round, a rot uh, a ward round late, and how I started quizzing the intern because we had a patient who had there was a patient with diverticulitis, and yeah. the patient was being treated with metronidazole and augmentin. And that's fine. That's 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 totally fine. But like, if you read in some of the resources, they'll talk about like metronidazole and a fluoroquinolone. But that like for fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, etc., um, they don't really have like significant anaerobic coverage. If you give like moxifloxacin, that's a fluoroquinolone yeah. that can obviate the need to give metronidazole. So like without without going down that route, the bottom line sure. is there had been like regimens I had read. And Metro plus Augmentin was not one of them. And our patient was being treated with Metro plus Augmentin. Right. And I like asked the intern about it. I wasn't like quizzing her per se, but I was like asking her about it. I'm like, why is this patient on Metro plus Augmentin? Like, why is why is this patient not on a fluoroquinolone? Um, some of the hospitals are all like OCD about resistance and stuff. So, yeah. but it came, the point is it came off the wrong way. And it, that conduct was noted. So this sort of happened. I had really poor attendance. I was an arrogant and and this process just continued. Okay, where by the end of the rotation, um, yeah. I just hadn't really internalized that yet, and the the attending said to me. He was like, if your, if your attendance doesn't improve, you will fail this rotation. Like, that's what he said to me. And I told him, I'm like, I'll 100% like do everything I need to do to pass rotations on a problem. And in the final week of the rotation, 
I literally just fucked up. Like there was a clinic that I was planning on going to. And I think I just like, didn't, I wasn't hundred percent sure at the time, something with the syllabus. And like, I didn't end up going to that clinic. Like I actually did want to go, but like, I, right. didn't, I didn't make it to the clinic and that's okay. okay. Sometimes like things come up, things come up. People yeah. understand as long as you're generally responsible and you communicate well. And like, I didn't, I hadn't gone through the whole rotation, like with poor attendance and stuff, but I missed the clinic in the final week. And I remember on the last day of the rotation, the, uh, I was on the ward round and the attending, uh, uh, the attending called the registrar and gave me the phone. And he was like, I want to see you in my office. And he was like, your attendance, uh, he's like, you're going to fail this rotation. Oh, that's, shit. That, that's what he told me. And I pretty much like, I cried in his office. Like I cried, oh, in his, I cried in his office and I thought like, and he basically was like, just study for your finals. That's what he told me. He was like, just study for your finals. And what went through my mind was, look, he's going to have a change of heart. You know, it's scary. You know, you're a med, you're a med student. Like it's scary. These things happen. Like you got to learn your lessons. Um, but like he's, he said like, look, just focus on your finals. Cause they're going to be in like five days. Just focus on those. And I'm thinking he'll have a change of heart. And it's like, I just, as long as I do on the finals, that's fine. So what did I do? Yeah. Studied for the finals. What happened? I did well on the finals. I did well in the surgery finals. But then when I checked my, my results, I failed attendance and failed the rotation. Oh, fuck. So I failed surgery. This was when I entered. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. You could feel patience. Like. I said, yeah, yeah. So talk about adversity. Talk about setbacks, right? And this doesn't, it doesn't even end there. Like I was so, I was so full of it. Like I had things lined up, dude. Like I had, um, at the time, at the time, like I had a visiting rotation at Harvard. I'm so amazing. Like I had a visiting rotation wow. at Massachusetts General Hospital lined up for the following January. And that completely, I couldn't go. I couldn't go because I failed surgery. Right. Oh, and I also, I, yeah, there, like I, there's a lot of, there's actually a lot of detail. Oh, uh, there's a lot of, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's actually a lot of detail. I'm not going to like plague you with. There was right. another rotation in Melbourne at a hospital that like I got in with, like, and I decided there's no point in going to that if I can't go to the MGH one. So it just put a fucking dagger into my plans. Man, I'm so sorry to hear. Like, that sucks. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. Yeah, but dude, really you don't understand. You, you, yeah, but before you say you're so sorry, you have to understand. Like, this is part of, this is hugely, hugely part of the reason that I'm able to see how adversity is so key to being in a good place in life. Right. Like not only do I embrace adversity, I talk about through dating and stuff like that. And like rejection, that's just one facet, but like, this is so, this was so monumental in terms of just my career and stuff. And by all means, like with top board scores and having like, you know, setbacks on rotations, that's fine. I wasn't even like, it's not like I was, I didn't need to go into fucking radiology at like Stanford. Like I didn't need that. Like by all means, like family medicine, pediatrics, like those are the things I was interested in by the end of med school. Interestingly. Wait, really? Yeah. I like, yeah. I, so I didn't post like, it's yeah. like Michael would be a really good vascular surgeon. Like, no. So I'm working with him right now and you okay. guys have very similar. Yeah. Like, a lot of things to talk about. A lot of things to talk about. Yeah. Every, every med student's interested in surgery going into med school. No, I fucking hate surgery. Right. Well, everyone's, everyone's <laughs> interested. Everyone like, you ask all first year med students and like half of them are like, I want to do heart surgery. The other half's like, I want to do neurosurgery. Right. So like, I think I had these ambitions. Um, I hated surgical. I hated my surgery rotation. It doesn't end there, dude. It doesn't end there. And then I went on to, I went on to the next rotation, which was GP. Right. Was, was, I went on to my GP rotation and I had the most phenomenal rotation. It was the most amazing rotation. Uh, it was in uh, a rural suburb. Maybe that doesn't make sense. Rural suburb, because but it was like a pretty rural area outside of Brisbane, and I had to commute 
pretty far to get there. And I worked under this GP, painfully brilliant guy, hilarious, amazing rotation. Okay. Loved my GP rotation. And he ended up actually writing me a letter saying that in the 20 years he'd been doing this with medical students, having medical students under him, he said I was the most ambitious, like had the best knowledge base of any person coming through. Right. Not to like talk myself up, but he wrote me, a letter. he wrote me a letter, but I'm like, I'm generating, I'm generating some, uh, I'm generating a, some preliminary information for you because when I tell you what's coming, so I somehow did not pass the, like the interview component for our GP rotation. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Uh, like there's a component where you have like mock patients where you have to like demonstrate empathy and like, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't pass that. So you get another chance and I didn't pass it a second time. I'm not fucking with you. I'm not fucking with you. Like, and are you a robot? So, so I, let me, so, so let me tell you. So dude, so now, now it gets scary. Now it went from like, okay, I fucked up surgery and, and like, oh my God, like this can't be happening. Like I fucked up GP and like now it was like, it was a dangerous situation where like I had to go and meet with the school head and they were like, if you fail a third rotation, you're out of med school. Just so you know, like, they're like, you can't fail anything. Again. And I had only up to this point, I'd only passed one rotation. I'd only passed internal medicine. And I told you somehow I passed. Right. Yeah. Cause, cause no one cared like about my lack of attendance and stuff. So I had only passed one rotation and it was a situation where it was like, I couldn't, they told me, they're like, you can't fuck up at all. So, and I passed med school, but like for the year and a half of like, for the rest of my time in med school, I suddenly just changed. I want to say I changed the fuck up. That's how I want to word it. Like I literally changed the fuck up. You like, grew up. Well, I got very, very like serious. Like I, I got into a place where like, just a very different place of like, I felt trapped because it was like so much what I didn't want to do. Like I didn't want to focus all on my rotations like that, but I couldn't fuck up. It was like, you know, I was focusing on the book on first aid and like my research and all this stuff. And like, it's so can I ask you why, like what, like why were you so into that? Like, was it to get a competitive residency or was it because it's what I wanted. you found research interesting? It's because it's, it's because it's, wait, why was I focusing all my own stuff? Wait, wait, I don't even, like, what is first aid research? Like, I don't even understand that. Like, no, no, like, I, was, I was focused on first aid, the textbook. Yeah, yeah. And then I was also doing research. So I'm saying oh, like, okay. I was doing all of these things external to my rotations. That, right. those things were my focus or my overwhelming focus. Okay. I wasn't focusing whatsoever on my rotations the way I needed to. And oh, sorry, so let, let me rephrase the question then. Like, why were you so heavily involved in research if you wanted to do family medicine? I did. Like, okay, so family medicine. yes, I get it. So I initially was all gunner about going into surgery. That was initially the case. Oh, okay. By the end of med school, I was genuinely interested in like family medicine, pediatrics, maybe internal medicine. Okay. I learned through surgery. Trust me. But I, that surgery was not, not for me. Surgery was not for me. I also learned, I also learned through research that surgery was not for me. I wrote an article for student doctor network about that actually, where like surgery is all about like hands-on stuff, mechanical stuff. Um, yeah. I was more interested in just the information. I was interested in memorizing like all the mechanisms and the information, but not actually doing things with my hands. People like the mechanical right. stuff, right? Dif very different way of thinking. Yeah. That's like the, one of the most upstream places to stratify, like, or to uh, kind of categorize like how you approach medicine 
That's right. self, that's right. self-awareness, right? So um, in the beginning, like when I didn't have any experience with clinical rotations, I was like, surgery, yeah. But toward the end, I realized I'm very much a non-surgical type. Same way with like uh, studying Japanese. Like I'm much more interested in like the book stuff and all this kanji. Like I'm more interested in that than I am in actual conversation or right. like watching anime or something. Some people are the opposite. So yeah. there's like, there's different types. So when I had a couple setbacks with rotations, I got very serious and I went on to, I had to repeat those, I had to repeat psych, or sorry, I had to repeat uh, uh, surgery and GP. I went on to psych immediately after. But when I, for surgery and GP, I had to repeat those the next year. I still had to go through psych and geriatrics during my third year. So I went on to psych next. And this is the beginning of the transition. This is actually, this is the first time I'm articulating this, the first time I'm saying this to anyone. So I was on psych and I was with uh, like a small group and we went to some, I don't know, some lunch conference where the speaker couldn't have been more boring and full of herself. All she did was like talk herself up. She was about like, I think she had been through like uh, alcoholism and she had recovered and now she was leading a new life. Like great for her. Awesome. Right. But, (laughs) but, but, but it, but it it was done. She, she talked about it in such a way, like she was so incredible and it was so outrageous the way this conference went down and we're leaving and everyone knew it. And like, we're leaving and I'm walking with the attending, just, just her and me through the parking lot. And she asked me what I thought of the conference. And my response was, I thought about it. Like I, I thought about it for a few seconds. And I said, um, I was like, look, I think, I think it was very positive to be able to uh, hear from somebody who's made significant changes in life and who's come to a much more positive place. That's what I said. Wow. And no, but I, I say that. What a because, point is it? Well, well, no, but I, I say that. Because that's probably the first time that I was much more careful. But it was genuine. Right? Because I had to be careful. So it's not really genuine then. No, no, no. It was genuine. But this is what's interesting. It's like like adversity forces change in you. If we put you out on the street and you're, it's like, first you're going to have an adjustment period where it's like, you know, you, you, it's hard to handle. Eventually you'll like, you'll change. Your personality will change. Right. You'll right. just be like, you'll have dirt on your face or something and not care. It's like when you see those videos of like, you know, the, the giraffes are in the wild and they've got like flies all over their face on the Savannah and it's like, they just well, blink yeah, and don't care. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's just what you're, you're you, you adjust to a new baseline. And it's sort of like I had adjusted. I had the setbacks with surgery and GP and I was coming through and I was entering, entering an adjustment period where um, that was the start of a new norm for me. And so I went through psych and I would buy people coffee and I was much more conscientious past psych. I went into geriatrics, uh, there's, there's so many stories from each rotation. Like there's a lot, to, there's a lot to talk about. Um, Which I'm kind of envious. Like, like I wish I had like cool stories like that. There's I, a lot, there's a lot to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the bottom line is I ultimately passed med school. Thank God. But it's like, I couldn't fuck up. I had a year and a half period where everyone else was much more carefree. And I observed that around me. I couldn't fuck up. And I was much more serious about passing med school. So when you like talk about this PDF that I wrote and stuff, like how I had this conduct, it's because yeah. I had to smarten the fuck up. 